What happened to Whistling Diesel's videos? You already know I'm America's attorney, but today we're tossing out the briefcase and we're bringing in the microscope because it's time to investigate the very mysterious disappearance of two incriminating YouTube videos from Whistling Diesel, AKA Cody Detweiler and his channel. Now, usually there is a charge to join me on this wild ride, but for today and for today's video only, it's gonna be absolutely free to lawyer up. So subscribe, smash the button. And let's get started. We're all Whistling Diesel fans here, and none of us liked hearing the ways that his rights were violated in that room with the prosecutor. So it's only natural that we all wanna know more. We want updates. We want follow-up videos from Whistling Diesel himself. We wanna see justice serve, and we want Cody to beat that foolish criminal charge into the ground. But instead of that, instead of that, we went in the opposite direction. Suddenly, we, we've got less information, not more. And why is that? Why has Whistling Diesel gone silent? Now, as I mentioned in my previous video, there are so many ways for Cody to just stick it to this prosecutor who tried to get a free PR stunt in front of Cody's 5 million subscribers. Now, to start off with, Detweiler could have made a little call to something called the Ethics Committee. Now, in every state, there is a panel of attorneys who act as ethics prosecutors. These panels are a little odd in this way. The small government agency functions like the police, the prosecutors, and the judges, all for attorney misbehavior. Now, those roles are divided up between various people inside the agency, but it's really just one little group of people in most states. So anyone can contact the committee and they can complain in writing about something unethical that they say that a lawyer did. And staff people in the agency investigate, and then the lawyers decide whether they will take that complaint and actually charge the lawyer with a violation. Now, I say charge, but it's not, it's not a criminal charge. They can't put the lawyer in jail, but they can reprimand the lawyer, like publicly shame them in writing. And they can find the money, they can suspend them from the practice of law, they can even disbar them. These last two punishments act like massive fines, of course, and getting fined or suspended, that is very, very, very painful for any attorney. And so that's kind of an ethics complaint in a nutshell. Not only is there that type of complaint, but based on Cody's story from the since private videos, he could also sue the prosecutor and take him to court. I spoke about this briefly in my last video on the topic. For the prosecutor to seek to compel speech is an obvious violation of the First Amendment. Now, I'd like to commend some of my viewers of that video for pointing out that the level of lawsuit immunity afforded to prosecutors is breathtakingly broad. But some of you, you went a little bit too far. Prosecutorial immunity is not absolute. What prosecutors are almost always immune from are claims made because of the acts that they perform in their pursuit of prosecutorial functions. And while I do not, not, not at all believe that that's how it should be, I understand why it is that way. They need discretion to execute the duties of their office with some breadth. However, if you learn nothing else from this video right here, I want you to get this much. To the extent that the prosecutor abandons that function, and is instead operating on some other level for some other function, like as a PR representative for the boater's ed class, that is not a prosecutorial function. Now, if I were Cody's lawyer and he wanted me to sue the prosecutor, not only would I sue the prosecutor, but I would also sue the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. When the prosecutor seeks to extort out of Cody the free PR for the TWRA, he's clearly acting on behalf of that agency He's become its agent. He has turned his back on his function as a prosecutor and he's just a spokesman for, or really an extension of the TWRA. So I would sue the prosecutor, I would sue the agency, and I would sue its executive director, Jason Maxidon. And last, but most definitely not least, he could report the prosecutor to the state police or better yet, to the FBI. That may sound extreme, right? but it was a shady plea deal offered in a dark room with no lawyer in sight. Well, if you're here to learn the rules of the game, here they are. Sometimes our actions have bigger consequences than we think because that illegal plea deal can also be called extortion, like the crime of extortion. The definition of extorting someone is attempting to attain value from them through force or threat. So let's break that down a little bit. Let's first talk about value. 
Cody's reach is far and wide. He gets paid from Google AdSense, he gets paid from his sponsors, and he gets paid from the sale of his merchandise, all based on the videos and the views of the videos. And the TWRA, through the prosecutor, wanted the monetary value of Cody's voice and his audience. So what about force or threats? Well, I hope this one is really obvious to you. The prosecutor told him in no uncertain terms, according to Cody, that he'd risk spending up to 364 days in jail if he didn't agree to the free promotion of the boater course. Now, in my view, this amounts to extortion. And what compounds the criminality of this effort by the prosecutor is the unmitigated shoddiness of the criminal charges against Cody. There's simply no way that a boating policeman can competently testify that beyond a reasonable doubt, the jet skis were within 100 feet of each other. It's nonsense. It's just a hunch. It's just an estimation. And that's to say nothing of the parallax effect. The charges were, and they still are, garbage. And when you threaten someone, to do something for you at great cost to them when you try to force them into it so they can't even really choose, that right there, in my book, that's extortion. But obviously you have to go to a law enforcement agency that's totally unrelated to the prosecutor, which is why I'd probably start with the public corruption unit of the state police or in the attorney general's office, but you could also start with a federal agency since they are not likely, or rather as likely, to be deferential to a local prosecutor. So you've got the ethics complaint, you've got a civil lawsuit against two agencies and two people, and you've got initiating a criminal investigation. But Cody, he hasn't done any of those things yet, at least not to my knowledge, not to your knowledge. But what he did do, what he did do was take down the videos exposing the prosecutor. Now, did you think that was a curious move? It wasn't curious to me. And now it's time for me to announce, ladies and gentlemen, that I have concluded my investigation, I've put away my microscope, and I've found only one reason why Cody may have deleted these videos. His lawyer told him to do it. Now, I've made this pretty clear, but let me restate it one more time. Cody has a very, very, very winning case. If he went to trial without a lawyer for the splashing charge, he's probably got a 70% chance of being acquitted, you know, not guilty. Now the boater's ed charge is a bit more complicated, but my point still stands, and that's just a small fine. You don't go to jail for that. But with a lawyer, which Cody now has, he has about a 99.9% .9 chance of being acquitted of the splashing charge. And the prosecutor knows this, and Cody's lawyer knows this. And 99.9% .9 is really, really high, but it's not 100%. And here's the thing, no lawyer wants to have a trial if they can just get the claims dismissed beforehand. When you hire an attorney, their job is to mitigate risk for you. Risk mitigation is the aim of taking the worst outcomes off the table, maybe even in favor of still slightly undesirable, but not really that bad outcomes. And that's why lawyers on both sides of all types of cases, both civil and criminal, are almost always telling their clients, you should settle. Settlement of cases takes risk off the table. So that one in a thousand chance of losing, that is technically, that's still a chance. Cody's lawyer wants to get the charges dismissed, not in a trial, but before the trial starts, before court. And my guess is that he'll succeed in that effort. But in case not, make sure you're buying Cody's merch so that he can keep paying his lawyer, obviously, and so he can buy more cars to demolish. How do you get cases settled before court? by lawyers talking to each other. Okay, so imagine you're the prosecutor in this situation. You can see that you are almost no way going to get a conviction on the boat splashing charge. You don't wanna to go to trial on that claim. Believe me, the prosecutor doesn't. So Cody's lawyer and the prosecutor, they pick up the phone and the very first thing, the very first thing that, that the prosecutor is gonna say. Dude, you gotta tell your client to not put me on blast. He's killing me. He's making is he gonna say it with these exact words? No, not exactly. But it is going to be super clear to Cody's lawyer that this is what the prosecutor is actually saying. Absolutely. All in all, Cody's lawyer is gonna have an easier time negotiating a plea deal if there's not very public, very illegal information about the prosecutor's action out there on the internet. I'm talking about the deleted videos. So Cody's lawyer told him, 
Dude, you made your point. Take this stuff down and let me make all these charges go away. So why hasn't Cody told you this fact himself? Why hasn't he told you, hey, I've got to take the videos down. I've told you this rule again and again and again, and I'm going to tell it to you right now. Do not talk about your case on social media. One more time, do not talk about your case on social media. When your criminal defense attorney tells you don't talk about the case with anyone, they really mean it. And even explaining why you would take down the videos is something that his lawyer doesn't want Cody to do. But I can tell you that the reason that he took them down and the reason that he didn't talk about taking them down is the same reason, because that's what his lawyer wants. And because it's easier for the lawyer to get the charges dismissed that way, which is what we all want because none of us wants Whistlin' Diesel to be whistling in a jail cell. Of course, the dirty secret that the prosecutor knows is that once he dismisses the charges, which he will, unless he extracts a signed written release from Cody on the civil charges, and that release covers the TWRA as well, Cody can still sue him. And no release regarding an ethics complaint is valid, so Cody can always make that complaint. But would it matter? I mean, I bet Cody did more to reform this prosecutor and others like him by his social media posts than he would ever get done by a formal complaint. Sadly. The system isn't perfect. So now it's time for me to hang up my investigator hat and go back to being your favorite, America's attorney. I want to know your pro se opinion. What do you like better, America's investigator or America's attorney? I'm just kidding! What I really want to know is if you think the social media scolding is enough of a punishment for the prosecutor, or if you're a little bit disappointed that Whistlin' Diesel has not yet pursued further action. Personally, I think he's making some smart moves here. Of course, I always want everyone to follow the advice of their attorney, but maybe you disagree. Let me know in the comments down below, and then come right back and check out my initial breakdown of the illegal plea deal, and I will see you later.